Hey guys, welcome to Dan's Recovery, welcome back to Dan's Recovery, um, I'm Dan, and I'd like to do something a little different, you know the interview I did with my friend Chris two weeks ago, um, yeah, eight views, which is good, I'm glad, I'm thankful for the views, thank you, um, yeah. I want to try to interview myself. I don't know how well that would work. But I'm going to try it. And, uh, yeah, maybe if, depending on how many, how well this video does, I'll have someone do a real interview on me and interview me for real. Um... Yeah, so, let me know. And, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and the notification bell. So you never miss another video of this awesome content, or what I think is awesome content. So, without further ado, let's see how this interview goes. How has addiction affected my life? Um, didn't really, I mean, I mean, I lost my self-respect, my dignity, um, I would look in the mirror, call myself all sorts of names, say nasty things to myself, and, um, call myself an idiot for saying I wouldn't drink, and then, Ten minutes later, I'd be walking down to the store to buy beer. Um, so it took my dignity, my self-respect away. And um, not necessarily my will to live, because I never lost my will to live, per se. But if I went to bed one night and didn't wake up the next day. I would have been happy with that. I, mean, I didn't want to die, but if I didn't wake up, I would have been happy with that. Um, yeah. All right. um, how hard was it for me to get sober? Mm. It was hard. Mm. First tried to get sober back in 2012. Um, I went to detox or rehab, whatever you want to call it, for a week. I guess detox, pretty much the same thing. Um, I think. Um, but yeah, I went to detox in 2012. And, um, twenty thirteen, I went again, and then I went again in twenty thirteen. Uh, at that point, I was just like, I'm a freaking idiot for doing this. What am I doing? I'm just wasting everyone's time. Um. I'm wasting my time, wasting everyone's time, I, but I did what I did, um, I went to detox drunk, a little drunk, not, not too drunk, because if I blew over a certain amount, they would send me to the hospital for a couple hours or a day, something, so I was alright there, but yeah. And, um, yeah. And then in 2015, two years later, uh, after New Year's, I, uh, flew out to California for a month and a half. Supposed to be two months, but it got cut back by a couple weeks, so it was a month and a half. And, um, yeah, it's, it's clean as 
sober ever since. How many times did I relapse? Um, a few times. Mm. I'd go to detox and then IOP, start drinking again all on IOP. I got caught and um, saw they extended my IOP. Um, it was supposed to be for however many weeks or a month. I got extended to two months. And after that, I uh, started drinking again because I didn't have to do any drug tests or anything like that. So I was lacking accountability there. But now I've been sober a long time. I realize that accountability had to come from me, not from anyone else. I had to keep myself accountable for my actions, my drinking. Um, yeah, I made mistakes along the way, but I've stayed sober. I've stayed sober to my mistakes. Um, putting myself in certain situations which I shouldn't have been in. And I could have avoided. Uh, should have walked away when that was presented to me. I should have said no and walk away, but I didn't. But live and not learn. I learned and never did it again. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's about. Three, three times. So, not a lot, but still. One relapse is too many. For me. Anyway, I'm done with that. You know, what made me decide to put the alcohol down? Um, uh, two things, actually. Um, when my sister was pregnant at the time with my niece and uh, I didn't want my niece going up seeing me drunk so uh, that was uh, one factor the uh, main reason why I got sober and um, another one came from my higher power God I was in the living room watching TV, YouTube videos, um, TV, TV at the time, and um, all of a sudden, commercials would come on TV, but they would be um, um, the commercials that would uh, that say um. can't think of it. If you or a loved one have a problem with drugs or alcohol, call this number. And at first I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, all right, that's normal. I've seen these hundreds of times before. No big deal. But it kept being repetitive. Sometimes they would play back to back. And I got, and I would get upset, change the channel. The commercials would come on. That's TV. Back to back, sometimes. That commercial will come on. Yeah, sometimes that commercial would come on, and then two or three commercials later, it would come back on again. So, it was at that point I looked up and said, I'm not ready yet. I let you know when I'm ready. So they continued. 
And I'm like, I know, I know, I'm not ready yet. Let me get to the holidays. After New Year's, I'll go. So I made a phone call to a rehab I found out in California. And um, talked to this lady, real nice lady. And, um, she uh, took my name, my number down, information. Told me to call her when I'm ready. I said, all right, I will. And the commercials kept getting more con more constant. And I got put up. I'm like, all right, I'll go. Let me get to the holidays first. So I did. Christmas, New Year's, I came one. Two weeks later, I flew out to California. And uh, that rehab paid for my flight out there. And they also paid for my flight back when I completed the program. So that was cool. And what would be my message of hope? My message of hope would be, don't give up, I mean, you are worth it. If you think you're wasting your time, everyone else's time, don't worry about it. That's what I did. And I kept, I kept doing it because I got to the point of hopelessness and desperation. I was desperate to get sober, and I did. I went that extra mile to make sure I got the help I needed. And if you don't think you're worth it, then get rid of that thought process, because you are. There are a lot of people out there that care about you. I want you to do better. I hear stories about uh, parents walking away from their kids or, and kids walking away from their parents because of addiction. It's not because they don't love them anymore. It's because they're tired of watching them die, watching them kill themselves. They're tired of the lies, the manipulation, the control. They're, they're just done. They still love the person. They just can't be around them. So. You are worth getting help. Please get help if you need it. There's a lot of resources out there. You just have to pick up that 9,000 pound phone and call, a, and call a number. Ask for help. Put down the ego, put down the... Yeah, ego. Right, there's another, there's something else to that, but I can't think of it right now, but yeah, put the ego down, um, throw the ego out the window if you have to, and pick up the 9,000 pound phone, ask for help. You can even reach out to me. I don't have any resources, per se, of my own. But being in recovery and being sober and going to AA and NA meetings, I've built a network of people that I can call and ask for help. And that's what I can do for anyone. 
if I don't have any resources of my own, I'll go to someone who might have resources. Or I'll look online. I'll do whatever it takes to help anyone get clean and sober. We cannot do this alone. And we should not do this alone. Some people can, and I'm proud of them. I know people in my life personally that didn't go to rehab and don't go to meetings and they stay sober. And I'm proud of them, too. I wish I could do that, but I can't. Um, I don't always go to meetings, but these videos help me to stay on the right track. Um, so, yeah, that's my message of hope. And, uh, I'm Dennis, I'm an addict alcoholic, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. God bless, I love you, God loves you, have a good night.